Let's continue our quest to understand additive manufacturing in general. As in the last episodes, we're going to focus on a specific 3D printing process. Today, let's talk about power bed fusion. Part 1 will focus on polymer powder bed fusion. As the name implies, all polymer powder bed technologies use a fine plastic powder, but the way of forming 3D objects from said powder differs depending on which process is used. The most common polymer powder bed fusion technology used today is SLS. SLS, or Selective Laser Sintering, was developed at the University of Texas in Austin in the mid-1980s by Dr. Carl Dickert and Dr. Joe Beeman. The material used in an SLS machine is a thermoplastic, polyamide, aka nylon being the most popular family, with PA12 or PA11, but some other compatible polymers include PP or TPU. The powdered material is stored in a tank and finely dispersed in a thin layer on the print surface one layer at a time. In order to fuse the fine powdered particles together and form a solid object, the machine preheats the material just below its sintering temperature. Thanks to this preheating, the unfused particles don't require much energy to be sintered together. This additional energy is brought by a laser which scans cross sections of the layer being printed to fuse the powder in place and form the 3D print. Other than SLS, some manufacturers like HP with multi-jet fusion and Stratis with SAF have developed their own polymer powder bed system technologies. One of the main advantages of polymer powder bed fusion is that because the prints are made from powder, the unfused powder surrounding the printed objects act as natural support, meaning that there is no need for additional support in order to build complex geometries. Polymer powder bed fusion also benefits from stacking. Another big advantage with polymer powder bed fusion technology is that the printed objects are close to isotropic, meaning that the parts are almost as tough in any direction, which isn't the case with many other AM technologies. With all polymer powder bed fusion, there is some sort of post-processing involved. As the prints are made from powder and are surrounded by unfused powder, the objects come out of the machine as a cake. Despite the enticing name, this cake has to be broken apart to remove the excess powder from the final objects. To do so, a few methods are available. The most common are sandblasting and wire brushing. Because polymer powder bed fusion printers use different technologies, the market is pretty broad. But all these machines are made for a professional workspace. Polymer powder bed fusion technology is mainly used in engineering, thanks to its close to isotropic finished objects, its precision and its ability to reproduce fine details. What do you think of polymer powder bed fusion? And what would you print with one of these machines? Share your thoughts in the comments. Tune in next time to learn more about how powder bed fusion is used with metals. See you soon on 3D Explained.